This is a short video to show you how we can effectively use the export and import captions and closed captions feature in Adobe Captivate. When we export the captions and the closed captions, we actually create a Word document and we'll be looking at this Word document shortly. The two examples that I'm going to show you here is a learning module with English words in it and using the export import feature we have created a Spanish version of the same file. We have done this using Microsoft Word's inbuilt translation so this is a tip which will save us from having to copy and paste the text from the Captivate file or even from the Word document into an online translation tool. We can do it all from within Microsoft Word. Now if we do outsource this work and we need to send the Word document to a third party, we have some very strict guidelines that we need to follow. When we export the captions and the closed captions, we actually create a Word document which then gets edited and we'll be going through some things that we need to be mindful of when we are working with this document. But let's go through the steps now. To export the captions and the closed captions from Adobe Captivate, we go into the File menu and then down to Export and Project Captions and Closed Captions. This will prompt us to save a Word document. So we put our Word document name in here, like so, and then we just press enter. Exporting from Captivate into a Microsoft Word document can take a while, so just be patient. This export took uh, a few minutes, so uh, yeah, just need to be patient with that. Let's open up the Word document. So with the Word document that opens, a couple of things to point out is first of all, it displays all of the text in a table and most of these columns we can just leave alone. Uh, if we do change any values in some of these columns we can break the whole thing so just be mindful we don't want to change the slide ID, we don't want to change the item ID, we don't want to change the original text and really the only column that we want to change here is updated text, the updated text caption data and we'll leave the slide number as well. Also do not make any changes to the Captivate file between when you export the closed captions and then when you go to re-import them again. Now we'll probably notice here that in the Word document we can't see some of the text so we might think that there's been a bit of a problem but in actual fact the text gets exported in the same formatting as it appears in Captivate. And we know that some of our text in the Captivate file is actually white. So we need to be able to see this text without changing the formatting of that text. So what we can do is we can change the page background color to any color so we can see that text. Now once again if we do outsource this uh, work and we send this Word document to someone else, we need to be very clear about what text is to be updated and in our case and in most cases the only text that you update is the updated text caption data. Now we can very quickly translate this content by right mouse clicking on the text and we go to Microsoft Word's translate functionality and then that will display the detected English in the first part and then in the second box over on the right hand side we can select a language, uh, I'm just going to leave it as Spanish and then all I need to do is click on the insert button. This saves us from copying and pasting. Now as we scroll down this particular Word document there is some text in here that is related to things like variables and sort of behind the scenes Captivate uh, information so we don't touch that information either and we basically only want to select the text within the cell and then once we click on the insert button in the translate panel that will update the text. 
if I select, for example, the whole table cell, like I have done here, then when I go to press insert, I will get an error message. So the translate feature can't actually recognize the cell. We need to select just the text within the cell. Uh, so once again, we make sure we select just from the beginning of the sentence to the end of the sentence, and we don't have the whole table selected. That's when we can uh, get into some problems. If there is text repeated, as there is in this case, that text is actually part of any rollover states or other states within that shape within Captivates. So we would obviously have to change all of the text in order for those rollover states to update as well. I'm just gonna fast forward a little bit here just to uh, show some of the other changes that we can make. If we do get the error, we just need to reselect the text. Uh, just make sure you've only got the text selected. It can be a little bit fussy, so we just need to be mindful of that. Also, text can be broken over pages. So in this particular case, the table cell that contains the text starts at the bottom of one page and then finishes on the next page, the top of the next page. So we just have to be careful that we only have the text selected, but in this case, we need to select it across pages. Now this can be a lot quicker than copying and pasting into a online text service um, using Microsoft's inbuilt translation tool. I'll just do a few more here. Now, when you save the Word document, we need to make sure it's saved in the same file type as it was when it was created. Now, Captivate exports the document as an older style or an older version of Word, which is a 97 to 2003 file type. Uh, make sure it's saved as that file type when you save it. If you save it as a DOCX file type, then uh, you may call, you may run into problems when you're importing. And of course, um, we can just save the changes we made to the document. If you get a compatibility checker, that's fine. Just click continue. And then we can close out of Microsoft Word. We go back into Captivate and we go into File, Import, and then Pro Project Captions and Close Captions. This import project captions and closed captions item will only be available if you've exported from this file. If import project captions and closed captions is grayed out, it means you actually haven't exported from this particular file. So you need to export the pro project captions before you import them again. So we click on import project captions and then we import. Okay, the items have been imported. The importing process can take a little while as well, so it just needs to be patient there. But you'll now notice that the text has been imported. We may need to adjust some of the caption sizes to allow for the new text that's come in. So hopefully this has helped in being able to use uh, this feature. So once again, the main things to remember when working with the Word document you may not be able to see all of the text because of the way it's been formatted. So if you change the page background color by going into the design ribbon and then page color, you can change the background color to be able to see that text. And then once again, only work or only edit the text in the updated text caption data column. Everything else in this Word document uh, just leave untouched and also don't make any changes to the Captivate file between when you export the closed captions and then when you import the closed captions, don't make any changes. And also, of course, when you save the Word document, it needs to be saved as the .doc file type, which is a 97 to 2003 
file type. So good luck working with the export captions and closed captions uh, feature and I hope it does save you quite a bit of time when translating or working with subject matter experts.